Today we're diving into the ultimate guide to reinvent ourselves by summer of 2024. friends, welcome back to my channel. It is officially Q2 of 2024. The seasons are changing, it's spring, but that also means we only have three months until summertime. Now that it's spring and with the changing of the seasons, we wanna reflect on the past three months, but also where we have the urge to better ourselves by summertime. If you're new here, my name is Angeline. We talk all things wellness, fitness, and self-care and how I fit it into my busy schedule as a mom of two kids. Now I think what's really important here is that we are personalizing our journey our goals to you as an individual. It's really easy to compare ourselves to those on social media, content creators, those around us. This is all about reinventing you. I don't love the videos about becoming the it girl or that girl because to me that means there's a certain persona that we're trying to achieve that may or may not actually be attainable or resonate with our goals and our values. What I think is important is that you reflect on who it is you want to be in summer of 2024 and set some goals to get there. I'm all about setting attainable goals. I think it's very common for people to set New Year's resolutions for the year that are super aggressive. And then come January, February, we've fallen off of those goals because we realized what we set for ourselves was just a little bit unattainable. I'm gonna actually have some tangible tips here for you that you can implement today. I like to call these quick wins, something that you can be doing immediately so that by summertime, you are seeing some progress towards your goals. Some of these are gonna take a little bit more energy, but I really need you to sit and reflect on why it is you are trying to reinvent yourself for 2024, and this will help you stay focused on your path. One saying that really resonates with me that I want you to reflect on is, don't need to see the whole staircase, just take the first step. Now I split this video into two parts, physical glow up and an internal glow up. I know I post a lot about physical changes I've gone through. I've had two kids and I work really hard to maintain a healthy physical appearance, but it also did come with with a lot of work on my mental wellness as well. There's a lot of content there about how to get back to your pre-baby body weight or whatever, but in my opinion, there's no going back to the person I was physically or mentally. I grew two different humans in my body and there's no going back to the girl I used to be. That's a video for another day. So whether you're young or old, a parent or not, single or coupled, there is something for you in this video. Now, before I go into the physical and internal glow up steps I have for you, I want you to think about your goals for summer of 2024. Who is it that you wanna become? What is it that you wanna look like? Setting clear goals help us stay focused on our journey. Like I said, a lot of people set really aggressive New Year's resolutions and as they work through them, they realize it's something that's not really attainable for their lifestyle. Starting small and keeping in mind, you don't have to change everything all at once. This is all about progress, not perfection. There's gonna be stumbles along the way, but if you fall off for a day, you need to just reflect and then move forward. Now, something that I think is important is putting our goals out there in the universe. For example, a goal for myself by summer of 2024 might be that I want to be able to do pull-ups. Now, I can think this in my brain and, you know, day to day I can go about my business trying to get stronger so that I can do pull-ups. But if I actually say it out loud in this video, you guys will hold me accountable. So with that being said, drop your goals in the comments below, put it out there in the universe, and let's hold ourselves accountable. Now I'm gonna start with the physical blow up because I always think that the physical is a little bit easier than the internal. I also feel like if you make some changes physically, sometimes that can boost your confidence a little bit and this also helps with the internal blow up process. And I don't want you to feel embarrassed about any of your goals physically and don't see it as being selfish, especially for new moms. There comes a lot of mom guilt about taking the time for self-care and working on our physical well-being. I definitely had a lot of mom guilt when my babies were born and I was leaving them for an hour to go to the gym, but I found out very quickly that I needed that hour to myself for not only my mental clarity, 
but also to work on my physical being as well. I would come home and be able to give so much love to my babies because I was able to give that love to myself. And something you've probably heard me say before is that you can't pour from an empty cup. So making sure we fill our cup first before we're able to take care of others, whether you're a parent or not, or giving 110% at school or your job. Starting with the physical glow up, number one, prioritize your sleep. Now for some of us, this is gonna be a quick win. We can commit to going to bed at the same time every night. We can set our alarms to make sure we're getting seven to nine hours of sleep, no problem. For others, if we are used to going to bed at midnight or later and we wake up for an earlier job, we might have to start creating a routine to go to bed a little bit earlier each night until you get to that seven to nine hour sweet spot of sleep. When you get enough sleep, you have the mental clarity, you have enough energy. I find I make healthier food choices throughout the day if I've had enough sleep and it's just much better for mood regulation as well. Now I'm not saying you need to wake up at 5 a.m. every day. Again, this is personalized to you and what works for you. Maybe you don't start work till 9 a.m. and you can go to bed at midnight and sleep till 7 30. This doesn't work for me in my schedule because I have two kids and I work a nine to five. Going to bed super early and waking up super early is what works for me. You have to find what works for you. Next, stay hydrated. You knew I was gonna say this. You just have to do it. You gotta do it. Set a goal for yourself and aim for that goal every day. Now that goal is gonna be different for everybody. For me, my goal is to drink three liters of water a day. Sometimes I hit it, sometimes I don't. On the days I don't hit it, I don't beat myself up. I just reflect and move forward. I encourage you to do the same thing. One of the tips I have for you is to get a cute water bottle and carry it around with you. Prioritize your nutrition. Eat healthy, whole foods most of the time. Do not deprive yourself of the foods that you like. It's not a good idea to deprive yourself of the things you love. Just fit it into your day, eating healthy, nutrient-dense foods the majority of the day. It's amazing what this will do for your mood regulation, your gut health, your skin has so many benefits. I try to eat healthy 80% of the day, but I still do like to fit in my sweet treats. I am eating some candy while I film this video, but majority of the time I do meal prep and eat healthy foods. Now you need to bring some movement into your day, whatever that looks like for you. If you're not active right now, then I recommend setting a step goal for yourself. Having a smart watch really helps with this. I know it is an investment. If you don't have a smart watch, even getting a pedometer and setting a step goal for yourself can make a huge difference. Maybe each month before summer, you increase your step goal just a little bit, but I highly recommend finding some form of movement throughout your day. If you're active already, maybe it means incorporating um, some heavier weights into your strength training. Maybe it means working on your cardiovascular health a little bit. This is gonna be something different for everybody. If you've seen some of my other videos, you know that for me personally, I don't love working out at home and I don't like going to the gym. I need to go to a guided fitness class. That's why I go to F45. That's why I was a spin instructor. I just find that this is more exciting to me. I'm excited to go. I really love fitting this into my day and that's how I know it's right for me. Next up, we have hygiene. This is going to be, again, different for everybody. We are just taking small steps here. Focus on maybe one thing each month that you can focus on instead of just change, trying to change everything at once. Some examples here, could be skincare. So you know that I am really big in my skincare. I'll link to my video here where I talk about some of the products I use for my skin. But I think it's really important to have a good skincare routine. This is something that I've always had and I always work it into my routine of self-care. So something that you might wanna dabble in. Now it doesn't have to be expensive. In my video, I use a lot of drugstore products. Or maybe the only thing you're gonna change is just by applying SPF in the morning before you start your day as we lead into the summer months. Hair care, again, I focused a lot on my hair care postpartum because I did have a lot of hair loss. My hair is now going gray. I have posted some videos on this before. Focusing on hair care can make a huge improvement. So maybe that's just going to the salon to get you know, a haircut, to get a nice refresh before summer. Maybe it's finding a nice hair mask and using that to help with dry ends. It's whatever you think is gonna work for you. And again, lots of people love getting their nails done. I'm not really big on getting my nails done, um, you know, Botox or, or anything like that. But you do you something that's gonna make you feel really confident by summertime. Something I did for 2024 is I did whiten my teeth using Crest White Strips for the first time ever. Again, I'll link to my video here. Something I highly recommend you do if you haven't done because it boosted my confidence a ton. All right, and the last one I have here, which is what I consider to be a quick win, and it's something that I personally have 
have been working on is posture improvement. Pay attention to your posture throughout the day. I sit at a desk for most of the day and my posture has really gone downhill. I can feel it in my back. There are moments throughout the day where I recognize the pain that I'm feeling. Walking and sitting with my shoulders down and back, just standing tall, it definitely helps with your confidence as well. But also for your back, making sure that your spine is aligned. Now let's focus on some internal changes that we can make to glow up by summer. And these are arguably more challenging than the physical changes. Now the first thing we want to do is actually setting our intentions. We want to reflect inwards, figure out what it is that we are trying to achieve, who it is we want to become, and maybe what aspects internally that we want to be working on. It could be anything from reducing stress throughout the day, finding a balance between you know, your children and your self-care, but setting clear goals, again, help us stay focused. In 2024, visual boards and journaling are really popular. I myself created my first visual board for 2024. And again, it just felt good to put it out in the universe rather than keeping all my goals internal. I can now see them on a piece of paper and I'm manifesting and working towards them every day. Journaling isn't something that I can fit into my schedule. It's not something that works for me. I have a lot of friends and family that absolutely love journaling. Journaling, and this is another great way to set our intentions and put it out there in the world. Mindfulness practice. Now, I don't know if you're like me, but when someone tells me that I need to be more mindful, I picture people just meditating, and this 100% is not me. I wish it was me, but it's not. Now, I think mindfulness can come in many different ways. I have a lot of friends that work meditation apps into their day. So setting, you know, 15, 20 minute guided meditations has really improved their mental clarity and helps them be more present throughout the day. So I have a hard time with this and it doesn't really excite me. It's something that I might try later on, but for this point that I'm at in my life, don't love the idea of sitting down to meditate. For me, mindfulness comes from putting my phone down, especially when I'm around my children so that I can stay present with them. But also I like to dabble in diamond painting, card making, scrapbooking, paint by numbers. For me, these are really meditative hobbies. I find that I can wind down, decompress, and I would highly recommend any of these if you haven't tried them. There's also a bunch of different other hobbies that you can take up, knitting, crocheting, learning an instrument, and bonus, if you go and take one of these classes, it's a great way to actually meet like-minded people. I think one of the most popular meditative hobbies that people have is gardening. I do not have a green thumb. If you've watched any of my YouTube videos, you know that I have like a dying plant here in my office. I'm working on it, but again, it's not something that excites me, so I'm not gonna force myself into doing it. Overall, practicing mindfulness reduces stress, provides mental clarity and helps us stay present throughout our day. Next up, we have gratitude practice. And again, this can mean something different for everybody. I think when you think gratitude practice, people think they have to have all this expensive stuff that they need to be grateful for. It is absolutely not the case. So I think it, it starts with a shift in your mindset and reflecting and focusing on those positive aspects of your life. When you go to sleep at night, rather than scrolling through your phone, maybe just close your eyes and pick a couple things to be grateful for that day. It doesn't have to be, like I said, anything crazy. It can just be that I'm so grateful that I have a roof over my head and that I'm so grateful that I can provide food to my children to feed them. If you're a new parent, it could be celebrating victories throughout the day, being grateful for a successful feed or a peaceful nap. Lots of people have gratitude journals and these are really popular as well. You know, the five minute gratitude journals where you spend five minutes of your day reflecting. But again, I think just shifting towards having a more positive mindset can have a huge impact. For example, stop saying things like I have to go to the gym today and saying, I'm grateful that I have a healthy body and I'm able to go to the gym. I have to drink three liters of water? No, I'm grateful that I have clean water that I can drink. Setting boundaries. Setting boundaries is huge for our internal glow up. It's time to rid yourself of relationships or people in our lives that are detracting us from our goals, who bring a negative energy, or whose values simply do not align with ours. Now this could be someone you know in real life, or it could actually be someone that you follow on social media. I really want you to reflect first on your relationships in person. I want you to think about, is this person helping me on my journey for physical and internal glow up, or are they draining me of my energy. We want to be surrounding ourselves with like-minded individuals. You know, especially as summer comes up, people are more social, they're more active, you're going to get invited to many things. So again, thinking, are the 
people that are inviting me or the people that are gonna be there, people that I wanna see, people that are gonna lift me up and help me on my journey. If not, just try to avoid people that you feel are toxic. Try to prioritize activities and relationships that bring you more joy and fulfillment. Now for social media, I'm not saying you need to unfollow everyone and you know cleanse yourself of your social media. This is such a popular thing these days. I'm saying if you follow an influencer or a content creator and what they're posting is inspiring or motivating you, then 100% continue watching their content because this is helping you on your journey. But if you find yourself being jealous of someone's house, of someone's clothing, of someone's body, immediately unfollow because this is not the energy we wanna be bringing. Self-care. I'm a huge advocate for self-care and that's probably one of the main reasons that I started this channel. So many women I know don't prioritize their self-care and lose themselves after having children and that's why I wanted to start this channel to motivate and inspire others to really be focusing on themselves internally and physically. And don't forget to like and subscribe because I talk about self-care a lot on this channel. Self-care can mean lots of different things to different people. For some, it could mean that you have the time and energy to take a two hour bath every day. And I love this for you, I do. For me, a two hour bath every day doesn't excite me, nor do I have the time. So you wanna find something that fits in with your schedule. Is it once a day, once a week, once a month? Are you going to get your nails done once a month? Are you putting a face mask on once a week? Whatever fits into your schedule and excites you. Last but not least, our final goal for our internal glow up is to challenge ourselves. So stepping out of your comfort zone, trying something new that you haven't done before, starting a new hobby. Maybe it's reaching out to that friend that you lost touch with who brings you a lot of joy. Stepping out of our comfort zone helps us grow and evolve. If you are starting a new hobby or wanting to join a club this is a great way to meet new people join that book club join that wine club go take knitting lessons learn to play the violin this is these are amazing ways to challenge ourselves and step out of our comfort zone now for me stepping out of my comfort zone filming youtube videos is way out of my comfort zone in the last few months i've grown so much more ways than i can count and i'm just so grateful for this community all right we have six physical glow up tips six internal glow up tips a lot of quick wins things you can change today so that by summertime you are reinventing yourself. I'll say it again. A reinvention journey is not about perfection. It's about progress. So just do something a little bit better tomorrow than you did today. I did want to mention that it's okay to ask for help. No matter where you are in your journey, don't be afraid to ask for help. Delegate tasks, lighten your load, set realistic expectations for yourself, but don't be hard on yourself if some days you can't get there. I'm looking forward to seeing what everyone's goals are and I'm so happy that we can hold each other accountable. Here's to summer 2024 and making this the best summer yet. Thank you so much for watching my video. I so appreciate you being here. Again, please like and subscribe and I will see you in my next video. Bye for now.